The file system is the structure in which all the information on your computer is stored. Nearly everything that has an identity on your system – data, commands, symbolic links, devices, and directories – are represented as items on the file system. It is paramount that you know how to get around the file system as a Linux user. Your files are organized in a hierarchy of directories. A directory is a container of files, as well as other child directories. When you are on the command line, you will have a current position on this hierarchy. By typing PWD, you can identify your current path on the file system. Think of this file system hierarchy as an upside-down tree. At the top level is the root directory, where it branches out into its own subdirectories. If I want to change my present working directory to the root path, I can do cd slash. I am now in the root directory. I can list what is contained in that directory with the command ls, as seen in the previous video. By listing out the root directory, we can see a collection of high-level directories. Let us examine each of them so we can understand their purpose. 1. Bin Bin is a standard subdirectory of the root directory in the Unix-like operating systems that contains the executable, in other words, ready-to-run programs that must be available in order to attain minimal functionality for the purposes of booting, in other words, starting and repairing a system. There is another directory known as sbin that holds only administrative commands and daemon processes. 2. The boot directory stores data that is used before the kernel begins executing user mode programs. This may include redundant or backup master boot records, sector system map files, the kernel and other important boot files and data that is not directly edited by hand. 3. Dev stands for device and is the directory location of special or device files. On Linux, devices are shown as files. Some of these device files allow users to funnel information into them like they are real files, examples being hard disks, RAM, and CD-ROM. The etc directory contains administrative configuration files. It's advised not to edit them as it could render your system unstable or in some circumstances unbootable. 5. The home directory contains directories assigned to each regular user with a login account. This would, of course, exclude the root user. 6. The media directory is for mounting file systems on removable media like CD-ROM drives, USB sticks, and zip drives. A USB drive with a volume name of My Work USB would be mounted on forward slash media forward slash My Work USB. 7. The lib directory contains shared libraries needed by applications in bin and sbin to boot the system. 8. MNT is a common mount point for many devices before it was supplanted by the standard media directory. 9. MISC, a directory sometimes used to auto-mount file systems. 10. OPT directory is available to store add-on application software. 11. PROC contains information about system resources. 12. ROOT is the home directory of the root user. This does not reside in the home directory for security reasons. If you are not the root user and you try to CD into it, you will get permission denied. 13. The TMP or TEMP directory contains temporary files used by applications. 14. The USR, or user directory, contains the largest share of data on the system. User documentation, games, graphical files, libraries, and a variety of commands and files not needed during the boot process. 15. The VAR directory contains data used by various applications, an example being a web server. This could be found at forward slash var forward slash www. Now, we know the structure of the file system. In the next video, we can look at setting permissions and ownerships of certain files and directories. Thank you for watching, and please do not forget to subscribe to the SMKS channel.